Oh shit, here we go again. So me and Al in the day room playing cards. Next thing you know, I hear, hey Dante, hey Dante, Al. So I'm looking and we see over there by the door and guess who it is, it's Tay. Now, for y'all that don't know Tay, me and Tay was like this, okay? He was maybe five years older than me. I knew Tay when I was maybe 14. I think, yeah, 14 years old and he was like 19. And um, we just always was kicking it. Matter of fact, he was the guy that moved in with me when I was in Pontiac. So, you know, he come over there to the table, you know, we embrace each other. I'm like, man, what are you, what, what you doing here, man? He like, man, it's over, it, it's over. I said, what you mean it's over? He like, man, it, it, it's over, man. I, said, I ain't going home, it, it, it's, it's a wrap, it, it, it's over. These bees done caught up with me. Now, I'm gonna give y'all some backstory about Tay. Okay, the reason why me and Tay stop talking because I do not condone whether it's family members or friends. I do not condone men beating up women. I just don't. I, I don't. It's it's just one of them things where I just feel like if you can walk away, walk away. Matter of fact, run away. If if you feel like you about to lay hands on a woman, get out of there. Okay. And if y'all toxic like that, where well, y'all keep assaulting each other, you got to get out of that relationship. It's not healthy. It's going to end bad like Tay story right here that I'm about to tell y'all. So I'm like, man, what happened? He like, man, come on, come over here, man. So man, Al, we pimp over there in the corner with him. He like, man, listen, so you know I was married, right? I was like, yeah, I, I heard about that. He was like, well, look, so here's the story. So my brother, he moved in with us, you know, with me and my wife. I'm like, okay. He said, so basically, you know, I, I like to drink. I said, yeah. And he was like, well, I, I, you know, I stopped, I stopped drinking hard liquor. I drink beer now. What I said, okay. He said, so his girl ended up getting a job at the Budweiser factory. I said, all right. So now, since his girl get to work at Budweiser, she get to bring home beer, like cases of beer. So he was just killing them, killing them. At this time, y'all, he ain't got no job. So he just at the house drinking, drinking, drinking. And his brother at the house drinking, drinking, drinking. So the, his wife like, yo, it's time for y'all. You got to get a job and your brother going to have to go, man. I'm tired of holding this down by myself. Now his wife has two kids prior to him, okay? They have no kids together. So... She like, you know, your brother around here, he drinking, he smoking. You you around here, you ain't doing nothing. You just drinking. I care about your health. Because he had like a bad liver, but for all that drinking. So what she did, she put the beer and she started, instead of bringing him like two, I think, I don't know, was it 24 pack or 30 pack? I think it was 24 pack. She would bring him like two cases of 24 pack every day and he'd be killing them, just killing them back to back. So she told him after they left the doctor, she said, you, you know what? I can't make you stop drinking, but I'm not bringing you no more beer because I care about you and I love you. Now at this time, her, the brother already get, left the house. So he got his own apartment. Uh, this is where the story get crazy. So he said that on her birthday, right, she had to go to work. And he felt like she was cheating on him with the kids, with her two sons, baby daddy. He said that her normal schedule, her normal schedule is 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. He said that, you know, they had plans around 6 o'clock to go out to dinner and stuff like that. Now, for his sake, for his sake, y'all, I get it, uh, what, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 9, 10 hours at work. And I got to get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning to get ready. So I'm up early in the morning. When I get home, Dante want to go to sleep. I don't think Dante, even if it is my birthday, that I want to stay up all throughout the day on my birthday. I'm tired. I, I probably just want to come home and go to bed. And this is what happened. So when she comes home, 
um, she automatically get in the shower, and he at the door like, man, what, what, what why? Because she never did this before. So it's like as soon as she came through the door, she jumped in the shower. So he like, hold on, why she get in the shower? And he already has suspicions that her and the baby, her and her baby daddy is still talking and messing around. But here's the thing, they wasn't. Dude just real insecure because he been doing bold while she had work. But that's a we're gonna talk about that in a, in a whole nuts a whole nother story. So she like, um, get get out the bathroom. He like, man, why you taking a shower? You you effing your baby daddy? You effing, and this is his wife, y'all. You you effing your baby daddy, you effing your baby daddy. She like, no, man, I'm just tired. I just want to lay down, refresh, and just lay, I just get out of here, man. I'm tired of you accusing me. He like, man, you, you effing him, ain't you? He gave you some birthday D, didn't you? He gave you some birthday D, didn't he? She like, look, man, get out of here. I, I'm, man, just leave me alone, man. So he like, all right, all right, B, all right, B. She was like, you know what, man, get, get out, man. J just get out. He like, I ain't going nowhere. She like, all right, wait until I get out. I'm going to call the police. I don't know what it is about when a woman tell an abusive man to get out her house and that she's going to call the police if he don't leave. I don't know what actually, you know, switch in their mind to make them go animalistic? Is it the thought that because you won't buck on a man and you realize that men are coming here to make you do what you don't want to do? And maybe that, maybe that might be it. So he say, what B? Now they have, in, in a bathroom, they got the tub where you close the, the glass window like this. It like go like open the shit like this. He punched through there, shattered the glass, and you know injured his hand. His his hand all bloody and stuff. And she screamed like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop! Stop!" Remember, y'all, her kids, her two sons, is in the next room, and they young. They like what four or five years old. So they hear this going on. So they run out there with a five-year-old around there. Don't leave my mama alone. Leave my mama alone. So he done grabs her by her hair and he dragging her out. And this woman has no clothes on. She's screaming. She hollering. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Now, the four-year-old is in the room talking to his daddy on the phone. And he hear what's going on. And he, he panicking. He like, Man, what's going on? What's going on over there? Put your mama on the phone. Put your mama on the phone. And the boy is just crying. So the baby daddy don't, he, he in the frantic. He don't know what's going on. So he like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. He only stayed about 15 minutes away. So he get in the car. He got the, you know what, man. He heading straight over there. Now at this time, Tay just beating her, beating her, beating her, right? I don't know exactly how long this beating was going, but the baby daddy come over there. Boom! Kicked the door in. And he got the you know what out. And now my homeboy like, oh, oh, so y'all is effing. You came over here to save this B? You came over here to get in my business, man? He like, he like, man, put, man, let her go. Let her go. He was like, man, this is my wife. I do what I want to do with my wife tell y'all something again before we go on I want to give a disclaimer right quick when you marry a woman and y'all say I do in front of the pastor in front of God a woman is not your property okay a woman is not a subspecies a woman is not to be your punching bag a woman is not the person that you just take all your frustrations out because take all your frustrations out on her because she there because she loving you and holding you down. If you feel like you got all this anger inside of you for whatever reason, go to a boxing gym. Go fight with men. There's places that you can let your stress off at. 
You know, go to the gun range. Go do something productive. Do not turn on your wife, the only person that's holding you down, especially if you ain't working, especially especially if you ain't contributing to the household and you just taking and taking and taking and never giving and you just complaining. While this woman get up at five o'clock in the morning and go and work from six o'clock to three in the afternoon. And all you doing is complaining, talking about, oh, the white man got me down. Oh, my life is bad because of my mama. Oh, my daddy wasn't there. Nah. At a certain time in life, in a certain, when you get a certain age, you need to have um, responsibility. Man up. So, baby daddy right there with the gun, like, let it go. Let it go. You doing this in front of my kids? You doing it in front of my kids? So Tay like, man, put the gun down. Let's fight. Let's fight. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. As he said this, put the gun down. He done let her go. And remember, y'all, this woman has no clothes on. So she just straight up exposed. And she just crying. She just hurt her face like this. She just crying. So as he said, put the gun down, let's fight, let's fight. He bagged him off into the room because he about to go grab that you know what. So dude grabbed his baby mama and like, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Get the kids stuff. Now, Tana ducked off in the bedroom. He done, he done grabbed that you know what. So now he come out the room with it like, yeah, yeah, what's up? What's happening? What's happening? So now it's a face off. He like, dude, you going to do this in front of my kids? You going to do this in front of my kids? I don't know. This allegedly, I don't know who shot first, but boom, 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 boom. The mama covers her two kids and lay on while baby daddy and husband having a shootout. Funny thing is, y'all, Tay didn't get hit. Baby daddy didn't get hit. His wife, you know, the one that goes to work every day, the one that, because it was her birthday, she just wanted to come home, get in the shower, and just relax, and then start her day. She ended up catching a bullet. She ended up catching a bullet. While she was laying over her kids and they shooting wild. She ended up catching a bullet. Okay. She didn't pass away yet. So while she bleeding out, the baby daddy run. Tay runs. The only person there is the the the, the wife and the two kids. And she's bleeding right here. She get she got hit in the side. So she called the police. I need an ambulance. Yes, the baby daddy fled and Tay fled. I need I need an ambulance. Please, I've been shot. I've been shot. Please, please send an ambulance. Uh, who did it? It was my husband. My husband. He was trying to shoot me and my baby daddy. It was my husband. What's your husband's name? Tay. Blah, 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 blah. We on route. Long story short, Tay was on the run. He went on the run for two months. They caught him at his mama house. Now he in here with me and Al. Let me tell you all something. Like I said, if you, in, if you are in a domestic violence relationship and y'all just always fighting and arguing, you need to get out that relationship. I know sometimes being in these relationships is like a convenience thing where well, she taking care of me, and I ain't, I don't want to go back to my mama house. Man up, man up. Don't don't stay with a woman out of necessity. Be with that woman because you love that one. You love that woman. Want to be with that woman? Stop playing these military mind games, man. Anyway, the woman passed away. She lost her life. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again.